One wrong decision after another, Eric Ten Hag continues to falter. The false hope this team is giving us is beginning to hurt. 3-0 at Old Trafford to Bournemouth in the manner we did, this is unacceptable. Old Trafford is falling and ladies and gentlemen, we've got to stand up and question these wrong decisions that are being made by both the manager and the players. Welcome to the hotspot. My name is Webb. Here are the top wrong decisions made by Eric Ten Hag and Co. in this game. Number one, the squad selection for me was wanting. After the game we played against Chelsea, you would expect that Eric Ten Hag should be improving on that squad. Improvement for me would be, look at the areas, the grey areas we saw in that game, and improve them. The grey areas in the game against Chelsea, which we won, was only one. Even if we won, we are leaking through the middle. We could have easily, and that has been the story of Manchester United. Eric Ten Hag has consistently, stubbornly, stuck to playing with one holding midfielder. He has refused to play double pivot. He has refused to play two holding midfielders to shield the back line and the goalkeeper. That is one big mistake. So starting, and actually choosing not to play Kobe Maino, for me from the start of the game, if you are watching on that watch along, I had my reservations about it. Because we are at a point where we need Kobe Maino to be starting games to organize this team. Eric Ten Hag has, has failed to appreciate that. The, few, the goals that are scored by Scott McTominay have confused Ten Hag into thinking McTominay will be scoring these goals every day. When, he, when they don't come, he's nothing. Yet we expect him to be supporting the holding midfielder. Amrabat was again exposed. He played, he covered a lot of ground. I don't think anyone covered more ground than Amrabat. He was running, but to what end? He will run and run, but the space for him to run in was too big. And you would see Scott McTominay was never tracking back right. It was actually Bruno who was trying to come in and assist Scott uh, 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 Sofia Namrabat. And you're thinking, then who is going to make the assist? Because Bruno is supposed to be the number 10. And then uh, Eric Ten Hag chooses to start with Anthony Marshall. And in his, ex his excuse is, Rasmus Hoyland has played too many games. What do you mean he has played too many games? He's a striker. He's not scoring goals in the Premier League. He's hungry to score goals. But you think about probably Champions League because Hoyland scores goals in the Champions League. And you're thinking, what benefit is the Champions League for to Manchester United now? Bayern will beat us anyway. Let us focus on the Premier League because we've got a bigger chance in the Premier League to compete for the top four. Manchester City... Is, 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 is struggling. They are just three points away from us. Arsenal have got a tough game against Aston Villa. Even the teams ahead of us are not doing so well. We should be focusing more on the Premier League. Our best players should be starting Premier League games. But you keep our best player, Kobe Maino, on the bench. Don't play him at all. Reach the point of making substitutions. You delay them. Anthony Martial should have been coming off before the end of the first half. That's the character of a manager. Communicate to this player that he's too lazy. We've been singing this. Everyone can attest that Anthony Marshall is the laziest player at Manchester United. And we saw it continuing to be lazy. He's lazy for fun, earning £250,000 per week to be lazy. But Eric Ten Hag is still Adam at least keeping him there. Wrong decision. Wrong decision again. Scott McTominay. Scott McTominay should be a bench player. Scott McTominay cannot be our main guy in the middle. He cannot be. Yes, he scores the goals and we love it. We see it. But he should not be afraid, Eric Ten Hag, of pulling off Scott McTominay. Let's go to the players. The wrong decisions these players were making. Anthony, I cannot blame, uh, rather, Andre Onana. I cannot blame Eric Ten Hag, whereas I know he wants to play from the back. But Andre, Andre Onana, and I've been seeing this, the first goal we considered, I've been saying this. There are areas where uh, uh, Anthony, uh, rather, Andre Onana, passes the ball to a midfielder or a defender in the wrong position. Bournemouth were pressing us from the start. So Lanke was staying up front because they know we love to play from our box and close to our goal. So the obvious thing for the opponent is to keep players there, to press you from there, so that they force you into an error and try to punish you. It's, it's exactly what they did. They pressed uh, Onana, they pressed uh, Bruno Fernandes, he takes a lazy chip as if he's in, his, in the final third of the opponent, but you're playing those lazy chips in your box to a Scott McTominay, who probably was not even anticipating. He had lost concentration. He lost one touch. He punished. Pass to Solanke. Goal in. Onana, you cannot even blame Onana for, that, for, for, for the finish, but blame the way we are playing around our goal. I felt that goal coming from the start of the game. Go and watch my watch along the last live video I put. 
at the start. Before that goal, I was saying it, that how are we just playing around our box like this? When we, uh, uh, we don't have players who are comfortable in the ball, you can do that if you've got Kobe Maino on. But Amrabat is not exactly comfortable on the ball for me. He's, not, he's, he's, he's losing balls with wrong passes. When he's pressed, he panics and loses the ball. This boy, Kobe Maino, does not panic even in tight positions. And I was giving him balls against Everton and he was turning and you know knows when to play one, two, or a one touch or turn around because he looks like he has got more time on the ball than anyone because of his vision and scanning. But Eric Ten Hag chooses to keep this boy on the bench. I don't know for what reason that he's growing. Boss, if he's good enough, he's old enough. Start him at least. Start him and pull him off. Amrabat was exposed again, like I've been saying. Whenever we play with one holding midfielder, the holding midfielder, with whoever it will be, will be exposed. Even if it's Kobe Maino, he will be exposed because the Premier League is too fast, but also the way we play, we play from around like this. So we create so many spaces in the middle. When the opponent gets the ball, it is so easy for them to take us back in through the middle. Poor Amrabat was running and fighting for every ball, left, right, and center, but he could only run so, so much. He cannot cover all that ground. Eric Ten Hag has got to forget about his fascination with playing and, and pretending like he has got Scott McTominay as a holding midfielder, pretending like it's a 4 2 3 1. Yet when we start, it's a 3, I think 5 2 or something, and then creates a lot of space in the middle. You don't play 3 5 2 without blocking midfielders. You play 3-5-2, you must have two blocking midfielders. A schema playing in front of the, 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 the three in the middle, who in this case look to be Amrabat, and then two holding midfielders blocking, one blocking on the left and on the right. That's how you find the balance in the middle if you're playing the back three. Because we start with the 4-2-3-1 formation, but when we have the ball, you would see that we went into a, a, a back three. You would see Sergio Reguilon and Dalo overlapping, and it was uh, 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 Luke Shaw, uh, Harry Maguire, and at times, uh, uh, at times uh, Amrabat being uh, uh, part of the, uh, the back three, or Dalot remaining. But we, we were clearly struggling in the middle. Eric Ten Hag has refused to solve that problem. What business do you have starting Anthony Marshall, the laziest player at Manchester United, earning £250,000 per week for being lazy, ahead of Rasmus Hoyland? What's the justification? By before the end of the first half, by the half hour mark, if it were upon me, Anton Marshall would have been substituted because he was not giving us anything. But Eric Ten Hag takes his time, half time, buys a few minutes, and then remembers to bring on Rasmus Hoyland late. Hoyland comes, brings in some life in the game. You would feel like we could probably get a goal. And then the other obvious substitution for me would have been Kobe Maino to come and support Amrabat. But also, Kobe Maine is a good passer. He has got a vision, and Eric Ten Hag knows these things. He's, he's a good scanner. You needed him to try and keep Bournemouth at bay. So we're having all this possession, but uh, Bournemouth never felt like they were threatened at all, by the way. They were never a threat. Even when we were passing and possessing the ball and swinging in crosses, it was Bruno Fernandes getting to the cross, end of the crosses ahead of Anthony Marshall, the number nine, smartly donned in his number nine. It was uh, Harry Maguire getting to the end of crosses ahead of Anthony Marshall, and you're still keeping that player there. So for me, there was a lot of wrong decisions made by Eric Ten Hag, by the players, but the biggest one for me was again refusing to play Kobe Maino. We were disorganized, and I can't blame Amrabat. He was trying to, he tried to be there, he was running, he was exposed, apparently he was the most tired player on the pitch. Then Bruno trying to track back and support Amrabat because Scott McTominay was, was hiding. I was not seeing McTominay. So what exactly are we doing? This team is giving us false hope, and it cannot be allowed. If the ultra Trafford, that is supposed to be a fortress, is becoming a place where we are beaten by Man City, and that's okay, beaten by Newcastle, and that's okay, but Bournemouth, by three goals, that could have been four or five. No way. Eric Ten Hag, man, style up. We love you, but man, you've, it, be, it is becoming so difficult to, to stick to you because you fail to make the decisions that improve the team. It is clear what you need to improve is clear. It's the midfield. Kobe Maino is the solution. That boy will keep your job. The earlier Eric Ten Hag realizes that the one player who is going to keep his job is Kobe Maino the better. 
But if he continues adamant the playing one holding midfielder, trust me, it's going to be trouble. United nil, Bournemouth three. It's the Premier League. Bayern next. Only God knows what's going to happen. Hotspot, subscribe. Player ratings. I even don't have the guts to give ratings to these players. Andro Nana, 4 out of 10. Uh, Luke Shaw, one of his worst games since returning. 4 out of 10. Diogo Dalo, maybe 4.5 out of 10. Uh, uh, Maguire was one of our better players. I would give him a 5.5 out of 10. Uh, who else? Sergio Reguilon, maybe a 5 out of 10. He tried to swing in a few crosses. Uh, Sofia Namrabat, because he ran a lot, ran a few wrong passes, but I mean, I can't blame him. With that distance, I would give him maybe a 5 out of 10 or 5.5 out of 10. Bruno Fernandes worked hard, but he was involved in, you know, giving away the first goal that opened way for Vladis to come. I would give him a 5 out of 10. Uh, Anthony Marshall, 3 out of 10. Ganacho, 4 out of 10. Anthony, 4 out of 10. All our players were below average. Most of our players were below average. Forgettable performance. Very disappointed. After beating Chelsea, we lose to Bournemouth like this at Old Trafford. What a shame. Subscribe. I'll catch you later.